So here I am with Max the Doodle, and we're at the dog park. It's very early morning here in Los Angeles, and it's empty. So we're going to take advantage of the enclosed space and work on some shortening of the leash. Uh, you may have seen Max here in some previous videos where we were using a long 30-foot uh, training lead, and now I'm going to try to phase him into uh, eventually getting to no lead whatsoever. So I'm going to still use a drop lead so I can maintain some control, but it's, at a point I want to uh, be able to phase him out completely where he's just listening organically, where it's just the command is the response and nothing else required. So I'm going to walk him a little bit here to get him in the zone. Let's go. Gonna walk with some focus and structure. Then I'm going to place him in a sit. And I'm going to walk away. And you can do this from a sit, a down, a stand. And ultimately, you want to get it where they're going to respond, where they're not in any command to begin with, because that's real life. All right, so I'm going to create a distance. We're about at this point where I feel he'll give me a motivated response on cue uh, without getting too distracted. And at this point, we're still building up consistency. I don't care about him making mistakes until we're ready to start proofing this. I just want to keep varying the environments, varying the situations, and like I said, phase him out of the equipment where it's just you get this pure level of listening because it's the command that engages him. So I'll even wait, there's a dog playing over there in the field, so I'm gonna call him, come! And that triggers him, I'm gonna back away a little bit, draw him in, here we go, good! Sometimes they step on a leash, you gotta watch for that, if they hesitate, you can motivate them and then sit. And once he gets to me, I have him sit and maintain his place. I'm a little off on the timing because I'm making a video here, but I wanna scratch him. I'm gonna get him right on the base of his tail, he can't reach, feels real good. And it's another reinforcer for why when he comes, it's a good reason to do it versus what he might be distracted by. All right, so I'm gonna do a little now variation of it where we're gonna do just some stationary distance training. That's another thing. As you see, some dogs will anticipate the next step and we want to be able to show them that the command is the moment they're maintaining. So he may be assuming because we've been doing some recall work that as I walk away, the next thing that's going to happen is that command he's been seeing. So what I'm going to do <laughs> is mix it up a bit, keep it random. I'm going to just do a sit on its own terms. So he never knows what's next. He has to rely on the command that's said versus thinking his assumptions work. Because in a training situation, the worst thing is like you saw, he gets up, I replace him in the command, we're good. But in real life, you might not have that convenience. So when you're doing these training commands, and I never understood why any trainer saw it this way, um, these are not tricks. These are real life practical skills you're developing in your dog so they can have these abilities, uh, you know, when you need them in real, you know, reliably. So with that said, I'm gonna come back to Max. He's been holding it. Very good, sit. Let's mix it up even more. Down. Let's put him in a down command. I'm gonna walk away. And now I'm going to transition back to a recall. And this is a little bit of what I do in my training sessions. I read the situation and I gauge moment to moment what might happen, even though I'm gonna kind of create a scaffolding for my initial game plan and then work off of that. Okay, so again, I walk away, I'm gonna call him. Come! Can he go? Oh, that's a good one. It's a good one. So this one's gonna earn him a little play time too. So he's gonna come to me and sit. Good sit, very good. Scratch on the base of his tail. I'm gonna undo the leash so he can zip around here. Okay, and there we go. Okay, that, so that was some transition from the long lead to a shorter leash to develop some distance focus building and recall. Thanks for watching, please subscribe. Love your dog, have a great day.